So about two weeks ago, I get this phone call and it's from a gentleman from New York and he's looking to buy a property in the Clearwater area, which is just west of Tampa, right by the Gulf. And um, this conversation is not entirely different than the ones that I've been fielding over the last 18 months, right? A lot of people have been moving to Florida. But what I've noticed recently is I've had this tremendous uptick from New York, New Jersey. And, um, you know, it got me thinking immediately, why? Why are so many people making these phone calls? Because they are. That's the phone calls that I've been receiving recently. Last year, it was a lot more California, Washington, Oregon. This year, it's seeming to be a lot more Illinois, New York, specifically New Jersey. And it got me thinking, okay, why? What's going on here? So I really wanted to dig into some of the research and share it with you. And if you've been paying attention to the news at all, this isn't shocking. I'm not bringing 10 p.m. news as a news bulletin or alert that you haven't seen somewhere most likely. But what they don't typically share are the reasons why. Why are people choosing to relocate from New York, New Jersey, New York specifically in this video, to Florida and Tampa specifically? And in this video, we are going to cover that exact reason. <music> Welcome to the channel. My name is Juan Alcala, and I am a team leader here with the True Living Group at EXP Realty. And if this is your first time to the channel, just know that we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to sleep here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. Also, if this is your first time, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. And hey, we're getting phone calls from people just like you from all over the country, especially in New York recently. Um, and we're getting phone calls, text messages, emails. Heck, I even get direct messages on Instagram from people just like you who are considering relocating, investing, or moving to the Tampa Bay area. But however you got to get hold of this, just know when it comes to making that move, we here at the True Living Group have got your back. So I want to get into these reasons. And I started doing some research and I, right away I found this article from uh, move.org. And I'll share a link below, by the way. Um, and hey, if anything is not accurate in this article, please be sure to let me know because I want to make sure that I'm sharing, you know, the best information I can. And obviously I don't live in New York, so I have to take someone else's perspective about what I'm reading here. And I dug through a ton of articles, but I thought this one summed it up the best. Okay. And it, and it broke it down into why people were moving in, into a few different, few specific categories that I wanted to share with you directly here. And I'm going to pull this up right now. Okay. Um, and this is what I want you to know in 2021, 20% of the country moved first and foremost, that is a huge number on an average year. You're going to see somewhere between 10 and 12% move. So to be up a full six percentage points over 2020, is a large number. And that's one of the, that is the largest number in, in the last 10 years specifically. It's a huge number of people moving. And out of that 20%, 20% of them moved out of state. And I know this to be true because I live in Tampa, Florida. I relocated here three years ago myself personally, and this place has started to boom since then. Last year alone, almost 50,000 people decided to pack up and call Tampa their new home. And there's a lot of reasons why. I want to get into the four reasons why people are specifically moving from New York, right? The study dug in, they interviewed, I think, a thousand um, uh, people who had relocated from the state and they asked specific questions. And these are the answers they got in return. So I wanted to share this with you guys because I thought it was very, very intriguing. Okay. So what it says is that 34% of them moved for family reasons, right? To be you know, whether it was a marriage or to be closer to their family, 20% um, of them moved for lifestyle preferences. And that can seem pretty vague, but think of it this way, like maybe it's retirement time, or maybe you just wanted to move because you enjoy water sports versus skiing. You know, those are the types of things that go into those factors. And we're going to get a little bit deeper on these subjects for sure. I'm going to give you some tangible items here. 26% um, of them moved because of career reasons, right? Maybe they got a job in Tampa or they could work remote and they were able to make that decision. 20% of them moved because of economic reasons, okay? So wouldn't you think the jobs and economics kind of go together? And they do, and I'm going to blend those two, you guys, um, blend them together for you guys here before the end of the, the, the video. 
but there's secondary reasons. And these are the ones that I wanted to share with you specifically, because going back to this phone call, this couple, um, what, what I want to share with you is, is, you know, they called, they reached out, Hey, this is no different than anybody else. But what happened was, is we went and looked at a home, they did it virtually. So I walked through the property, did it all through video for them, shared what I saw personally, drove around the neighborhood, showed them what the neighborhood looked like too, because buying a home sight unseen can be very nerve wracking for people. But what you need to know is if you're going to relocate to, to Florida right now, with the way that the market is, you're most likely not going to be able to get on a plane, you know, the following day come down and then be able to, to go see this property. Homes are going under contract in, in hours and days. The average home, the average home in December in Tampa sold in seven days, y'all. Seven days. So that's not a long time, you know, to, to, to make a decision. And it certainly isn't enough time for a great property because they are literally getting multiple offers in that day. And I share this with you because we, we toured a home. I showed it to them. It just wasn't the right fit. I really felt like their money could go further and the, the location wasn't an exact match for them. But what happened was, is that house wasn't for them, right? So two more days goes along. I get another phone call, same couple. Hey, we found a property. Will you go check it out? Absolutely. So I go to the home. I show up. I have a scheduled appointment with the listing agent, right? And when I showed up, it was supposed to be a, a private showing and it looked like an open house. That's how many people were there waiting in line to get that property, right? And um, I got in, got my time, spoke to the agent. Beautiful home. We toured it. The buyers absolutely loved it, okay? We were able to outmaneuver and negotiate a contract, which won right? Which won the contract. The, my buyers were able to put this home in escrow, which means that they have the potential to, to close on this property, which is awesome. We beat out multiple offers. I think that they said there was 11 by the time that we were done. And that happened in one day, y'all. That's how quick that property went. So again, this is not to scare you. It's about to show you perspective, okay? So I'm, I want to bring it back to this couple and the reasons that I'm about to get into next. And what they said was, you know, we had some issues with the with the inspection, which the home was built in the in the late 70s. It's been renovated. But when people renovate houses, sometimes they don't go all the way through. And this home was one of those great examples where everything wasn't perfect, right? They had done the full interior, but they didn't do the roof. They didn't do the mechanicals. Um, and there was, you know, some other things that had happened in the property. And we're not going to go too far deep there. But the deal was almost about to come apart. And we had work back and forth with the seller. We finally come to terms, but here's the thing that shocked me. And this is why I want to share this story with you and why I find it so important was the fact that the wife gets on the phone and she says, look, Juan, we are not going to make any irrational decisions about where we buy a home. We are moving to Florida and we'd like to do it sooner than later, because honestly, it's getting worse here every day. And that hit me in a very unique way because I've had this conversation with a lot of out-of-state buyers over the last year, people from California, people from the West Coast, right? There's wildfires and their air quality has turned terrible or, you know, for political reasons, you know, there's a lot of challenges, whether it be drugs or homelessness or taxes or whatever they are, right? But immediately it put me back to those conversations about, oh, okay, it's become such a challenge for, um, for you personally in terms of how it's infringing on your lifestyle, which is one of those things that they brought up in this, in this, um, this survey here, that you are ready to make that move. So they give this list of secondary reasons. And what I found, honestly, is I think in the poll, they were telling you what they thought you wanted to hear. And then in the secondary reasons, this is the conversations that I'm having. And what I want to preface this and say up front is this is not my opinion. This is what this poll says, number one. And it's been my experience on the phone calls. Now, I want to share that with you before we get into this list, because if you're from New York or you're from out of state, you know, you could be looking at this saying, Juan, you're crazy, but I'm the one taking these phone calls, y'all. And I'm sharing this with you because these are the conversations that I'm having. And if you know anything about me or this channel, you know that I'm trying to share the good the bad and the ugly of Tampa as well, y'all. So we get done with this, go check out my pros and cons. You'll see that I share the truth, okay? As much as I possibly can. I don't know everything, but I'm more than willing to share my experiences and what the facts are, okay? So let's get into the secondary list, which again, I really think is the main reason why people are leaving. 39% of the people, right? 
cited political reasons why they were going to move. And we're going to get into that for sure. Uh, 37% of them cited lower taxes. And absolutely, we're going to talk about some highlights there. 38% of them cited um, climate change. Now, I found that interesting. They don't go any further in the uh, in the actual study here. So I was like, well, where's, where's the meat behind that, right? 45% cited lower cost of living, which absolutely is the case. We're going to get into some details on that. 43% of them cited a better culture. Um, I think that goes back to political environment. You know, if I had to give some sense, it also has to do with the happiness factor of where you live. Um, and then 32% cited better weather, which that is obvious. This is, that's a no brainer if you're talking about New York to Florida, right? But it ain't all sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. We'll get into that too. But what I wanted to do is back all that up with actual numbers. So, you know, this, this poll is great and people gave the information, but what I want to do is share the numbers behind, you know, these things that they're citing on, on, on this poll. So I did some homework, dug up some things. If you, if, again, if I state anything inaccurate here based upon taxes specifically, please put that in a comment below. Um, I, I always try to make sure that I'm bringing the, bringing the facts as much as I possibly can. I don't want to take any liberties. And if things have changed, you know, based upon the information I pull, it'd be super helpful if you do that. But let's get into this. All right. So 39% of them cited political reasons. Well, listen, y'all, it is no one's hiding from the fact that, you know, um, Florida has been the poster child for keeping things open during this entire pandemic, right? And whether you believe that that's a good thing or you believe that's a bad thing, it doesn't change the fact that it's true, okay? And this is what I know based upon these conversations that I'm having with potential you know, relocation clients and people who are just fed up with it. And that's how the conversation starts. We can't take it anymore. We're tired of living this way, right? We want to make our own decisions. And again, whether you think that that's right or wrong, doesn't matter. If you move to Florida, you get that option. And while I know people are very polarized about our governor, this is what I'll say. I've said this before, but Ron DeSantis in Florida is second only to Jesus, right? Like, and that's, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but that's how it feels. You know, people defend him to a level that you cannot believe. And then there's people that vilify him to the same level. Um, but what I will say about the governor of Florida and Florida in general is that Florida leans on the side of personal rights. Okay. So no one here in Florida is telling you, you can't wear a mask. No one in here in Florida is telling you, you shouldn't wear a mask. Well, there's not jobs everywhere. So let me keep that in perspective. Um, however, People give you the right to choose. And what I love about this state and what I find that my clients who are looking to relocate to this area love about the state is you get to make your personal decision. If you want to wear a mask into the store, please do, right? People aren't going to attack you for it. You have that personal freedom and it is 100% up to you. If you want to put mask on your kids and send them to school, do it. That's totally cool. But what you need to know is if you're going to move to Florida, you're going to walk into a public grocery store and you're going to see a bunch of people without mask on, right? It's probably 50-50. I haven't done, I haven't done the poll, but my looking at it objectively, that's what I see. Same thing with schools. You know, there are parents who choose to send their kids to schools with mask on and parents who tend to not do that as well. So, you know, understand that your personal freedoms are extremely important in the state of Florida. And the governor is going to lean on the side of giving you the decision to make that what you believe is the best quality decision for you and your family, if you're going to relocate. Right. So government overreach is not a you know, it happens everywhere, y'all. Let's, I'm not the guy who's going to sit here and tell you I'm pro-government because I am not. Um, I'm pro-American 100%. But what I do know is that overreach isn't nearly as aggressive here <laughs> as it is anywhere else I've lived. I've told you before, I'm from Metro Detroit originally. Um, you know, and I love my home state. I love being a Michigander, but I, I there's lots of things that made me decide to, to move and my personal freedoms were one of them. So just a heads up on that, okay? Lockdowns are non-existent here. <laughs> we don't have any lockdowns. Our governor's signing, uh, you know, uh, bills that say you cannot do lockdowns here and you're not gonna oppose the people. So just just so you know, that that is what's happening in the state of Florida. So that was the first thing on that list that I wanted to tackle. The second thing, when they're talking about 37% of them cited lower taxes, well, after Absolutely. Okay. And that was part of my family's decision to move to Florida as well, knowing that we weren't going to have to pay a personal income tax anymore uh, if we made that decision. So we were essentially going to get a raise if we made the same money. And I wanted to make this tangible for you. Okay. Um, because they, 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 uh, they cited 45% of them cited the lower cost of living. Well, these two things go together. So I want to kind of merge them together here in this, in this conversation. 
the, you know, when we start talking about state and local taxes, like, so let's put it in perspective. What I saw on the chart was that, you know, it looked like in the highest income bracket in New York, um, the personal income tax was 10.9%. And I realized that it, it may be a sliding scale. So not everybody's going to pay that, but you know, anyone making a, a, a decent wage is probably going to be, you know, coming in near that clip. So I want to use an example of hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you earn a hundred thousand dollars a year and I, you may not be, but this is easy math, right? Um, easiest way to do it. Say you're in $100,000 a year. If you're being taxed on your personal income tax from the state, I'm not even talking about city taxes or anything else like that. If you were to get the 10.9% back because Florida pays zero state income tax, y'all, zero. So that's why athletes <laughs> live in Florida for six months in a day, right? That's why they own homes in Florida because it allows them to be Florida residents and not have to pay a personal income tax, right? So let's go back to our example of $100,000. If you made $100,000 a year and you were paying 10.9% taxes, that's $10,900 you're gonna pay to the state. If you move to Florida, you are getting a $10,900 raise if you make the exact same money. Well, of course that's a huge windfall, right? But let's take it even further. Let's talk about lower cost of living and how that would apply. Like, how do we make that tangible? Obviously, that's a really large vacation. You could take your family abroad on that kind of money, right? Or you could take two great vacations you know, in the United States on that kind of money. But let's break it down even further. The average home sale, that the average median value, sorry, in, in, uh, in New York City right now, what I read was $737,000. That's what the average home value was. Now, I'm looking at prices. I know that it's probably a little bit more than that, but I have to go based upon the numbers, right? Again, we're always using past data, but I ran the numbers here. I run them every single week in Tampa. And this past week, the average home sale over the last seven days was $410,000, okay? 737,000. Versus 410. And look, I know that New York City is not Florida. I get it. But if you're considering relocating, this is a considering factor, right? You can get a $10,900 raise if you make $100,000 a year. You can essentially cut your housing down by almost, oh God, 60%. That's a humongous drop, right? And I really want to make this tangible. So the, the mortgage payment at Three and a half percent interest on um, a four hundred ten thousand dollar property. Property it, for just principal and interest is roughly eighteen hundred dollars a month. So eighteen hundred divided by ten nine, you're talking about six months roughly. And uh, I'm doing quick math in my head, so bear with me if I'm wrong. Put it in the comments below. Um, six months of free living essentially. If you were to sell your home in New York, come down here, pay zero in income, state income tax, right? Um, our state sales tax is it's high um, in Florida. I, well, I would consider it high coming from Michigan, but I think it's probably pretty fair nationally. When I look at other states, it's you know seven percent. It can be eight percent in Tampa proper. If you're on the outskirts, it seems to be seven point five somewhere around in there for state sales tax. Um, I did see that New York City was up around eight and three quarters points. Um, don't quote me on that. Again, I'm looking at information and I don't live there, but just from my experience, that's what I'm seeing. So like when you factor these things in, it really starts to make a difference. What if you made $200,000 a year or $300,000 a year? That's a lot of income coming back your way, right? It's unbelievable, okay? So Florida ranks fourth in the nation when it comes to state and local taxes, fourth lowest right? New York is in the top three highest. That's, of course, people are moving here, right? So that is a contributing factor that I really wanted to dive into. Okay. So another thing they cited was climate change and better weather. So I wanted to kind of put those things together too, right? Because it's obvious, right? New Yorkers have been, you know, we call them snowbirds. I'm from Detroit. They call me a snowbirds. Our friend and friends in Canada, we all travel to Florida, right? Like that's a rite of passage for some reason. If you live in the Northeast or the Midwest or, or in Canada, your families travel to Florida in the winter if you were, you know, if you were lucky enough, right? And being in New York, you've got I-95, which travels all all the way down the East Coast and ends down in Miami, right? And then if you were from the Midwest or from Canada and you came across the bridge there, right? You would hop on 75, which goes all the way down to Key West, 
right? So it makes sense when you saw the, there's like this natural partition where it seemed like Midwesterners and Northerners uh, um, tend to go to the West coast of Florida. So that's why you see a lot of Midwesterners and Canadian uh, Canadians in the, the Gulf region here, right? The Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Naples, Sarasota, like that's where it tends to be. And then on the East coast, you, you got a lot of nor Nor'easters, right? So you know, people living in Port St. Lucie's where the Mets play and, you know, Fort Lauderdale and Boca Raton and Miami, like, you know, and the running joke here in Florida, you know, people from Florida call Miami the sixth borough. That's how many people from New York, right, live in, in Florida, or at least snowbird in Florida, right? And when I say this term snowbird, if you, if you haven't ever heard that before, you're clearly not from New York, but anyone from the North who flies South for the winter is a snowbird, y'all. So for those of you that don't know, but the reason we all came is because in the winter, it's freezing, right? It's gray, it's cold, it's windy. Typically, we don't see the sun for more than five days out of the month from, you know, and I'm, I'm giving some hyperbole, but it's funny because it's true. And things are only funny when they're true, right? And I listen, I grew up in the Great Lakes. It was cold. We got a lot of snow. It was gray, dreary, bone chilling. You're, you know, boogers freezing your nose. It's, it's ridiculous, right? So people are dying to get out of that on a normal basis, right? And then all of a sudden you throw in this global pandemic and then it just accelerates everything. So clearly the weather is better here, but let's talk about why, okay? First of all, our beaches are extremely warm, especially on the West Coast, right? We don't have the cold Atlantic current that you see over on the, on the Atlantic side. There's, but there's a difference between the ocean and the Gulf, y'all. So keep that in perspective, okay? Just wanted to, to share that. One's not better than the other. They're just different. I like warm beaches. Our, our beaches tend to not be as aggressive. We don't have these huge waves because of the, those currents. And we've got a huge Gulf shelf that runs out for miles, um, which keeps the water fairly shallow, which keeps the water very warm. Now, during the summertime, and again, this is about the pros and cons kind of too, right? During the summer, there are points, you know, August, early September, when the water's just wet. And what I mean by that is like, we, we can have water temperatures of 88 or 89 degrees. <laughs> and uh, that's basically bath water, y'all. And it is the weirdest thing in the world when it's like, you know, 89 or 91 degrees outside and super muggy and you walk into the water and you don't really feel a difference outside of pressure. It's so strange. All right. But, you know, that's one of the cons. I, I, I share the truth with you here, right? Like, but here's the, the, the pro, you know, we have over 240 days of sunshine. If you live in St. Petersburg, it's called Sunshine City. And St. Petersburg is a, um, you know, a suburb, so to speak, of Tampa. But, you know, we, we kind of look at it as a triangle. It's like Clearwater, St. Pete, Tampa. But Tampa Bay is the greater area. So when you hear that, that's what you're, what you're thinking of. But our average temperature throughout the year is 82 degrees, okay? when At the time of this recording, it is January. Um, it's in the winter. And um, as you can see, I've got long sleeves on. I've had pants on. It's been this is the fifth day actually, and everybody's over it. That's how good the weather is here. Okay. The sun has come out, but it's rained for two days in a row. I think people are about to lose their mind. We, you know, there's memes that run around that you can see all the time, like Floridians, you know, hurricane, we're having a party. We're not afraid of anything, right? Pandemics. Apparently we're not afraid of anything either. Cold fronts, bunch of ninny babies, right? And this is true. It, it does happen that way, but 82 degrees on average temperature throughout the year. Of course, that's attractive. Now, during the summer, I'm telling you right now, J July, August, September, which is the rainy season, okay? It is hot, it's muggy, it's steamy. I feel like, <laughs> oh, I tell everybody, it's like, I, I imagine it's what a, a crab feels like in a, in, it's about to go in the steam pot. Like, it just gets crazy. But I would gladly take those three months, right, of sweating, having a shower twice, jump in my pool, go get in the water, whatever it is, then you know, dealing with the, the alternative, which is layering up, taking extra time. If your car breaks down, you can literally lose limbs or, you know, die on the side of the road. And every spring that the, you know, the spring flower is car parts that comes up on the side of the highway because people have been smashing into the barriers. <laughs> like it's nuts. And um, again, these are the reasons why we move. You have your own, but people are, they're, they're saying that weather is a factor there, right? And it is, okay? So I want to make sure that we talked about that. And we want to talk about the next thing on the list, which was economic and job growth. So I'm going to put those two things together as well, y'all. And hey, again, 
If you disagree with anything I'm saying, please feel free to let me know. I've got pretty thick skin, but I would love to be corrected if I, if I didn't say something right. Let me know. I'm all about it. And also, if you're getting value from this video, please feel to hit the subscribe button and click that little bell as well. But let's get into the, the economic impact here, right? Job growth. And they're moving for job reasons, but also economic growth. And, you know, Florida specifically had, had the number two job growth in 2021 behind Salt Lake. Um, and Tampa specifically was the number two in the country behind Salt Lake City. And that is awesome, right? Now we have a, a defense contractors that are here. You know, the big ones that are here are Raytheon. Uh, we've got Lockheed Martin, um, Honeywell, uh, General Dynamics, and CAE are, are the big, big driving factors here. We've got MacDell Air Force Base, which is in the south um, south west component of St. Petersburg, I'm sorry, Tampa specifically, right across the, the St. Pete Bridge. Um, we've got the Coast Guard, which is another reason, obviously the Gulf, right? The Coast Guard drives that as well. But recently, tech jobs are starting to come here. Marketing industry jobs are starting to come here. Marketopia just signed a big deal. Um, the tech companies are here, and I'm not a tech guy, so I want to read these to you because I don't know these companies specifically, but if you're in tech, you might. Um, we've got EPAM, DeepWatch, Procore, ServiceNow, really big companies moving in the area and providing a lot of jobs, so that's been another reason that's, that's happened. The other thing behind that is people who are able to work remote all of a sudden, you know, maybe you were forced into a job or, let me, let me give a better terms you loved your job but you had the golden handcuffs right like you could never leave your location you were bound by geography because of your employment well COVID has changed that dramatically and employers are have given their employees the green light to go and move wherever they want and people don't necessarily want to be stuck in the cold and gray and gloomy and listen I know New York has some beautiful summers y'all and I'm not arguing that I'm from the Midwest I get it right Michigan has some incredibly gorgeous summers um but it's a very short season, right? We have six months of summer, and then we typically have another six months of summer after that. It's awesome, right? So I wanted to kind of give that factor. Financial, right? Raymond James, we have Raymond James stadiums where the Bucks play. Um, you know, Raymond James has been a, a financial institution in the Tampa area for a very long time, right? You've got Amscot Financial, you've got Aspire Financial, um, you've got all of the big banks operate out of here as well. So those are economic driving factors also, Okay. Disney, right? Disney employs a lot of people. Universal, um, Disneyland in California relocated 2,000 jobs in 2021 to Florida. So like there's been this big jump. And in terms of perspective, if you drive from Tampa to Orlando to go to the mouse's house uh, to Disney World, it's about an hour and a half drive. With traffic, it can be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, depending on what's going on. If you live in Tampa proper, when you cross over the Gulf, OK, um, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay specifically and, and move over to Pinellas County. You know, if you're going to go from Tampa to the beaches, you're roughly 45 minutes. FYI, you can be from downtown Tampa to downtown Clearwater in about 45 minutes, um, which is a nice short trip. It's great. It's nice and easy. But this ep economic driver has been what's moving people as well, right? Num Tampa being number two in job growth, that is fantastic, okay? So that's another thing they cited on that list. And what was the last thing? And culture. And this is the last thing I wanted to talk about. You know, obviously, we talked about weather and the beaches and, you know, the boating, the paddle boarding, the manatee. There's so many things you can do. We have natural springs in the area. Um, we have a snowcat ridge, which is a snow park. It's the only snow park in Florida. Um, they they are getting approval right now for uh, the largest wave pool in North America is coming to Tampa. I mean, Tampa is exploding, y'all. There's lots of reasons to make to consider this your your next home or your second home, and. Um, you know, the last thing we're going to get into is culture, right? We talked a little bit about like where people moved, you know, back in the day, your grandparents are probably the one of the ones who bought a place in Miami or bought a place in Sarasota and Tampa uh, back in the day or Clearwater. And now it's left to your, your parents or, you know, whatever that is, however you started coming to Florida, people fall in love with it. And it's not just because of the weather and the sunshine and the beaches and all those things are wonderful. But what I would really like to know, let you know about Tampa specifically is that our culture is awesome, okay? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be straight up with you here. I'm from Detroit, right? I'm from a, a, a hardworking town, blue collar where people pulled up their bootstraps and got to work, 
right? Um, but it it grew into you know engineers as opposed to to just factory workers and obviously C level executives and and you know things change over the year, but that that work ethic doesn't go away. And what I know about New Yorkers as well is y'all are some tough people, man. Y'all are some very tough people. And um, you know while that serves you really well, when you come to to Florida in general, but specifically Tampa, here's what I found. You know, the thing about Tampa, um, it's different than Miami or the East Coast in this way. Um, it's very casual, okay? The flip-flop lifestyle that you that you may project on Floridians, that tends to be the lifestyle on the West Coast. A lot of Tommy Bahama and flip-flops, you know, the you're not going to see a whole lot of people overdressed on a daily basis. Suits don't exist here because you pretty much will die during the summer <laughs> wearing a suit. Um, and, you know, people wear them. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm poking a little bit. But honestly, if you live anywhere near the beaches, it's people wear shorts, tank tops, and flip-flops, man, or Tommy Bahama. Like, that's what they do. And that lifestyle is there. The one thing I had to adjust to, I know for me personally, is when I got down here, things moved slower. And I moved here because of that, but at first it was hard. It was hard for me. I was used to a tempo on the roads. I was used to a tempo in my service, like how quickly people got to the table. And when they come down here, it's still the South, y'all. And I say, y'all, I've been here for three years, but trust me, it, it wears on you and you start saying it, right? But what I will say is it allows you to slow down and really appreciate what the area has to offer. You know, we have this beautiful sunshine every day. We have this beautiful beaches and rays that swim up to the beach and dolphins. And like, it's sometimes to slow down and really catch that beauty and take it in, right? And the pace is different. If you work at a phonetic pace, meaning you're on all the time, it's gonna be an adjustment for you. Just know that, right? The, the stoplights take like three and a half minutes. It's crazy. And if you're from New York City, New York City, you may not even drive. But for me, uh, coming from the Motor City, everybody drives, right? And the, and the lights turn over every 45 seconds. So like you're used to this quick pace. I got down here and I was like, man, you can knit a blanket at this stoplight. It is crazy, right? And, you know, there's bugs that you don't have up north. There's, there's definitely pros and cons about it. And if you're interested in that, you know, check up because my pros and cons video goes really deep into all those things that we were kind of surprised at that we didn't have to deal with in the north that you have to deal with down here. Um, and I'm transparent as all get out on that stuff uh, because you definitely are in for a shock on, on some things. But man, the pros outweigh all that stuff. I don't regret for one second, neither does my wife ever making that move from Detroit to Tampa. This is our home. We've learned to just absolutely, we've fallen in love with it. We fell in love before we ever made that decision um, just with the beaches and, and that type of lifestyle to begin with. So, you know, when we talk about culture, you know, you're going to find Florida man down here, y'all. Um, that's going to happen. Make no mistake about it. You're going to drive down the road and there's going to be somebody that's going to upset you. But then you look to the left and you realize that that big glowing ball in the sky is there to, to love on you and hug you. And you can go to the beach and find all of your, your tribe, your people. Trust me, I meet a lot of New Yorkers on a daily basis who have, you know, decided to call Tampa their home. And it's just been awesome. You know, so when, when I share that with you to know that like it's diverse, you don't have to worry about are my people there, right? First of all, we're your people, right? But number two, it, Tampa's diverse. There's so many people from all over the country. It's very rare, right? What I would say from my personal experience <laughs> is that I feel like the people that I meet where we live, well, less than 25% of them actually grew up in Florida. Everyone else is a transplant from somebody else. And that's brought a tremendous melting pot. And if you live in New York, I don't have to tell you about melting pots. Y'all got it down. OK, that you'd be teaching me something. But from my experience, this has just been such a wonderful, exciting experience. Now, back to my story, right? I shared, shared that secondary reason because it's been the primary reason. The reason that I'm getting those phone calls from people all over the country, just like you who want to relocate is because of the political environment, because of the weather, because of the economic situation that it's in. They feel like their property values are going down. And Tampa, y'all, was just uh, voted the best real estate opportunity of 2022. It is expected to be the hottest real estate market in the country. And if that's true, then that means we probably got a two to five year runway. And um, if you're considering making this move, whether it's one week, one month, one year, or 10 years from now, just know that my team here at the True Living Group have got your back when it comes to all things Tampa Bay, making that move, I would be more than happy to serve you on the real estate side. 
You can call, text message, DM uh, on Instagram if you want. I've got my email attached and there's actually a link to my calendar below. So you can schedule a time that works best for you, that is most convenient for you. And we can talk about how we can help you make that jump. And hey, thank you for spending this time with me. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.